So I was curious, um, I was just watching an episode of yours um, earlier today, and something that um, kind of came up for me was... Big Good man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, something that came up for me was uh, big tech in particular, especially with uh, this election cycle and how social media plays such an integral role to um, information being spread during elections. And um, you had uh, raised issue with Elizabeth Warren's plan um, to try to regulate social media, where yes. you said that um, if she's trying to uh, prosecute those that are believed to um, be spreading misinformation, that it could open the sort of Pandora's box um, mm -hmm. for uh, regulating this type of material. And so I was wondering, um, what you think the the role of the federal government should be in trying to regulate this misinformation. Um, and I guess just a, as an example, um, as well, if you think that companies should follow the example of, for instance, Twitter, which decided to simply just do a blanket ban of all uh, political advertisements. Uh, so, okay, I'll, I'll work, uh, I'll, I'll go in the, the flow you asked. That's a really good question. Um, so, and this, is, this isn't a direct answer, but this is, I feel like, my work. So what I was trying to do in that segment, too, is to, again, historicize this. I see people on social media and on television. Uh, let me make it really specific. You, have you guys ever heard of, and I doubt you have, have you ever heard of a guy named Joe Lockhart? Okay, he's a CNN pundit. He was Bill Clinton's press secretary. He co-founded a firm called Glover Park Group. Now, Glover Park Group is a major major political consulting firm. They've done work for Verizon, for the Saudi royal family, for films that you've seen, for uh, camp, uh, AstroTurf campaigns to try to convince people to cut Medicare and Social Security. There's a lot of firms like this. Dewey Square Group is a firm like this. There's, and so you have people, and I'm not even talking morally, although you could make a moral objection, but they have set the whole stage for what we call fake news. They have set the whole stage for why people don't believe information. They have manipulated science. They have generated campaigns. Like um, Dewey Square Group, it was reported, was a masters of, and this is like, they were very uh, big in the 90s, so this is even harder to track without the internet. They were supposedly masters of hiring people who had community, and this is very Mike Bloomberg territory, uh, I think that your professor is, um, I, I'm, sitting, I'm in a school board, and I think that he's a community activist who's concerned about kids in the community and improving their outcomes because I know of his work. I've decided we as a district or a state more likely should ban soft drinks in the schools because they're terrible for kids' health. And all of a sudden he comes in and is like, no, that's actually a really bad idea and it affects these different student outcomes. And I'm like, well, that sounds bizarre, but I think this person's credible. He's working for Dewey Square Group, right? That's the type of thing that they did, okay? So in the last couple of years, you have people who have wanted to reduce the result of the 2016 election to fake news or memes or whatever. Nonsense. There's major, major historical and macroeconomic trends behind that. And if you want to have a conversation about fake news and propaganda and misinformation, this is not a plot in Russia that was hatched the modern PR industry goes back to, I, I guess, the 30s or the 20s with Edward Bernays and is a global product that has affected how we campaign, how kids get exposed to different foods, and so on. So I have a problem philosophically out of the gate with this kind of liberal control freakery, like, well, there are things that are wrong and we're going to tell them that they're right. And, Partially because I disagree with it, and also because it's a fucking loser. You know, like, great, yeah, go up against Donald Trump and tell him that his facts are wrong. Good luck. You know, I mean, so when I see a kind of like, when I see that approach to a problem, I just, I have a huge allergy to it. Now, specifically, one of the things that I saw that she said was that she would make it illegal, as an example, to post fake voting information. Now, I... I, I, in that totally specific instance, I agree. I don't think that that's a so, that, that has been happening for decades. People have put flyers on the, on the billboard, right? Don't forget to vote on Saturday. Like, that should be part of a proposal on voting rights and protecting the ballot in an era of massive voter suppression. Now, to me, I think 
things like Google and Twitter and so on be, need to become publicly absorbed utilities. And that will mean that the First Amendment will protect them. And you're going to have to deal with it. But I'm also confident that if we actually deal with material concentrations of wealth behind propaganda efforts, and we have a bit more of an equitable playing field, that I actually trust people's intelligence and capacity to figure things out on their own. So I hope that answers some of it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs>